Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Happy October. I thought I would make the background a little bit festive since it's officially October, even though it's already like a week into it. I had planned on filming this update Wednesday. Didn't feel like it Wednesday. So I planned on doing it Thursday. I was off that day. Had no excuses to not film it. I didn't film it Wednesday or Thursday either. Didn't film it yesterday. And so here we are Saturday. I wanna post it today, so anyway, it has to happen. So here is my 23 and 24 week twin pregnancy update. Brad had duty last night, so he is trying to catch up on sleep. He ends up staying up almost all night when he has 24 hour duty on the weekend. So I'm gonna to try to be a little bit quiet so he can catch up on some sleep. I've been corralling the animals away from the door. They like are so excited that he's home that they're all hovering outside of his door like in our bedroom while he's sleeping. So it's been a job trying to get everybody to just relax and let him sleep. So uh, regarding the babies, developmentally, there's not, not a lot going on from here on out. Everything is just kind of finishing up um, with their bodies gaining weight. They're each about a pound and a half. I can give you more detailed statistics on that later when I talk about my doctor's appointment. So they're roughly a pound and a half each and they have, um, their hair is, coming in in the color and the texture that it will be. So I think that's really exciting that like our baby's hair is already looking like it will look whenever they're born. So that's really funny. So as I get into my symptoms, I want to give a disclaimer. If you're, uh, if you're new to our channel and you're not used to my updates, it can get a little bit TMI. I talk about pretty much everything and don't really hold back at all. And there's two reasons for that. One of them is I think it's very helpful whenever I watch one of these videos and I wanna know what to expect. So I like for um, no detail to be spared whenever I'm watching videos like this. Secondly, I'm doing these videos not only for like to help other people that may be going through this as well, but also for myself to look back on. So, you know, I think I'll be curious to look back on what weeks 23 and 24 were like when I'm going through future pregnancies to kind of compare them and and just remember what I was feeling at that time because you you so quickly forget what it's like. So I'm pretty open and honest. I talk about pee, I talk about my uterus, um, you know, all of those things. So if you're not into that, you can tune out right now. <laughs> For my symptoms, the past couple of weeks, there's only a few things that are new. One of them is that I'm still having this right side pain but it's shifted a little bit and I think now, more so than my kidney, I think it's my ribs expanding on this side and it's getting really uncomfortable, especially at nighttime. And I've read that like when you're sitting, kind of hunched over, that's when you can feel it the most. That's definitely true. But laying down is really hard for me, especially when I'm laying on my left side, the right side hurts a lot. And so when I'm sleeping, I'm constantly flipping from my left to my right side because I can't lay on my stomach and I can't lay on my back. I think if I could lay on my back, it could give me some relief, but I just can't do that, I'll pass out. So that's been really uncomfortable, and as a result of that, I've been getting horrible sleep at night. As a result of that, I've been really tired the last couple of days. So I think it's all related to that side pain, and I don't know, I mentioned it to my doctor this week at my appointment, and she said, yeah, that, you know, that sounds like pregnancy. So she didn't really offer any um, like advice or any solutions. Um, I've looked it up online and I guess there's a few stretches that you can do, but they were mainly if, like for if the baby's head is like pushing up into your ribs. And I think this is more of just like an expansion. So I'm not sure if those stretches will help me, but I'll try. Another thing is my sciatic pain on my left side. It's happened some on my right side too, but it's by and large my left side sciatic nerve. And what will happen is I'll step or shift my leg a certain way and I'll get this shooting pain on my left side. And then it's like I can't, something's out of line and I can't get it back. So like every little movement sends like sharp shooting pain down this side for like the next several hours. And then like rolling over in bed will do it. It's just like, I don't know how to fix that either. My aunt is a physical therapist and so she recommended that I do these stretches where um, like I loosen up my hips and I started doing those and I think they did help a little bit, but while I'm doing the stretches, my legs are going numb. So I, something's getting pinched and 
I don't know, I guess I shouldn't be doing the stretches if I'm losing all feeling in my legs. So I'm gonna get a, um, I booked a maternity massage and it's gonna be a 90 minute massage and I'm so looking forward to it. So that's next week. Hopefully that will help a little bit. If not, then I'm, I think I might try a chiropractor if it doesn't get much better. So uh, symptom wise, that's, you know, that's really it. I have written down that I've been really stuffy. Uh, that cold that I was starting to get when I filmed my last update got way, way, way worse. And my doctor said like, pregnancy cold is the worst. So he, it was really funny. He was like, yeah, pregnancy cold is actually even worse than the man cold. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And the reason for that is I guess because like, all of your nasal passages and everything are already like prone to being swollen and stuffy even without having a cold so then when you get a cold on top of that you just are so congested like I was so congested even in my lungs like I just could not breathe I didn't and I didn't know if it was because like the babies had grown to a point where they were restricting my lung capacity which they definitely are but like being you know having less room here and being really congested was getting downright scary at times like I could not breathe and so Brad got me this humidifier that helped a little bit. It was just, I had to get through it. And I guess I can breathe now. I'm still, I think I'm still a little stuffy and I don't know, maybe that's just gonna be that way the rest of my pregnancy, but it's not near as bad as it was. So that was, at one point I had Vicks Vapor Rub. Brad got me some Vicks to like rub on my chest at nighttime. And I had my nose in the jar and I couldn't smell it. That was crazy. Uh, the babies, I can feel them like all the time almost all the time. It's really cool. It's the coolest thing ever. So I can definitely tell the difference between when she kicks and when he kicks. And you know, if someone wants to feel from the outside, it's very reliable. I, I know where to put their hands so that they can feel too. And they're also getting the hiccups a lot. Like probably, probably two or three times a day, one of them has the hiccups. And when they have the hiccups, it's hard to tell who it is because it's my, like my entire abdomen kind of convulses when they hiccup, so that's funny. Last night, this is the first time this has happened, I felt a lot of pressure in my right side, and so I, I was just like putting my hand there, and I felt the outline of a head, and it was the weirdest thing. I like kept putting my hand there, and then I was like afraid to feel it much because it's like a baby head, and I was like, surely that's not what that is. So. Like I felt the other side and it definitely didn't have a head there. And so I felt back here and it was there still. And then like after a few seconds, it went away. So I'm pretty sure it would have been, I think it would have been his head that I was feeling last night. So that was really, really cool. As far as preparations go, like getting ready for the babies, we are slowly checking things off of our registry list. My mother-in-law had the genius idea to do like an online shower with uh, Brad's side of the family since they're all so far away. My baby shower in Missouri with my family would have been far for them to come to. So we did this online shower and it's been awesome. It's like every day or every other day we'll come home and we'll have some, you know, some gift for the babies that we've received in the mail from his family. So we're super appreciative for that. That's like, I mean, that's helped so much just like getting things checked off of our list. There's so much you have to get. So um, that's been fun. I also have done this, like a, it's like a pyramid chain mail book exchange. And that's been really fun. I'm always kind of skeptical about those things, but <clears throat> this one ended up being really fun. So you, you get a letter in the mail there's someone that you send a book to and then you send this letter out to six people. And then those six people send it to six people and then those people send you a book. I think, something like that. I'm sure you guys have heard of these things. So we sent out one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish to uh, a girl I don't even know. And then we've received probably five or six books in the mail just randomly since then. And it's really cute because the mail comes in addressed to the Engelbarts twins and then they have like a little book in there. Some of them I've heard of, some of them I've never heard of. So it's really neat. It's like really helping their library expand. Not that they need help with that because I think their library is gonna be one of the biggest of any baby ever born. So that's been fun just getting like little kids books in the mail and reading them. Another TMI thing, bras. So 
towards the, like the end of my first trimester I finally had to like put all of my bras aside and get new bras because everything grows and so now I am kind of at the point where I need to go up another size and I think I want to go get measured again. The bras that I've been choosing are on Amazon and they're actually nursing bras too and I don't know if you're if you're like pretty well endowed before pregnancy these may not be for you because they uh, they don't have a whole lot of support but they're very soft and very comfortable and for me it's not a big deal they're not cutting into my shoulders or anything they're fitting okay i can just see how they wouldn't have a lot of support if you were very large chested but they um they've been a lifesaver and they're not expensive they're like 20 dollars for a pack of three and they come in different colors so i usually get like a pack with black nude and pink and i'll leave a link below i i ended up buying these like at the end of my first trimester and then I just bought another pack of them the other day and they're pretty much the only bra that I'm wearing right now. It's like the only thing that's comfortable so um, those have been great and then they'll also serve as like a nursing bra later on and the sizes are just like small medium large maybe extra large and so it's not like a really specific size where um, they won't work if you go you know if you shrink or increase in size a little bit so uh, I think they'll work even, you know, when things change after birth. I'll still be able to wear these and they're really convenient for nursing too because they just unclasp. So those have been awesome if you're looking for a bra. Check out the link below. Uh, I have to brag on Brad for a minute. He has been like the ideal husband during pregnancy. He has been awesome. I always say like if you're, if you're ever pregnant you need a Brad because it's just been great. Some of the things that have been difficult for me lately are like bending over and so anything where I need to bend over like put my shoes on and put lotion on my legs after the shower are really hard and I have to hold my breath to do it like it knocks all of the wind out of my lungs so I can't breathe simultaneously while I'm putting my shoes on or while I'm putting lotion on my legs and therefore I'm getting I'm doing it right now so like I get really out of breath doing things like that and it's uncomfortable so when I get out of the shower, I'll usually bring my lotion to Brad and he'll put lotion on my legs for me, which is awesome. And then he doesn't put my shoes on because that's just hard to do. But another thing that he does that I've noticed and like, I don't know how he even knows I'm home, but like he usually gets home before I do. And so I'll pull in the driveway and then he's walking out to the car to like get my bag from the car for me so I don't have to carry it in. Things like that that are just like making my life easier. So it's. I'm so thankful for him. It's He has made pregnancy less uncomfortable, I guess. Okay, so my doctor's appointment. I've had two since my last update. I had one with the high-risk specialist that com comes down from Charleston and the continuation of our anatomy scan. And then I, have, I had an appointment Thursday with my regular OB. That one was really uneventful. We like basically didn't accomplish anything. I don't know what these are for. She measured my belly, but that was really about, oh, I did my glucose test losing my mind. Um, so back to the appointment that I had with MUSC. It was the best appointment by far that I've had the entire pregnancy, the most informative. It was a doctor I hadn't met yet and he was amazing. I got a lot of information from that visit. So this doctor, he was so endearing. He was like, I don't know how to describe him. He was like thin and kind of pasty and had like really feminine hands and stuttered but was like so smart and so funny. He was the one that said the thing about pregnancy colds being worse than a man cold and just like would joke with me, he sat as long as I wanted to answer all of my questions and answered them thoroughly. So it was just night and day difference from my previous appointment. And a lot of you guys were concerned about like me switching doctors after you heard like how bad that last visit went. I don't see the same doctor I mean, there's like six or eight doctors in the practice and I, they want me to see each one of them at least once because we don't know who will be delivering the babies and they want me to know them all. So I had seen, you know, I had seen her one time. I probably won't have to see her again the entire rest of the pregnancy and I, especially if I don't want to. So um, don't worry about that. I'm definitely getting good care um, from the other doctors in the practice. So no worries there. But this guy was awesome. 
So they did the um, the rest of the anatomy scan and they measured the baby's size. Last time they were dead even in size. This time our boy was a little bit ahead of the girl. Normally twins are in the 20th percentile and our baby boy is in the 56th percentile. Baby girl is in the 48th percentile. So they're large. They were measuring one pound eight ounces for him and one pound six ounces for her. And this was two weeks ago. So even bigger now, like at 25 weeks, they're supposed to each be a pound and a half. So they're both like probably past that and they're twins. So it's awesome. They're like, they're growing really quickly and like on target for a single baby, which I'm really, really proud of. The last thing that they had to get on her was like her heart views. They didn't get very many heart views on the first one. She struggled to cooperate for that. So, I mean, that's pretty much all they had left to get. Just a few growth things and then her heart views. Her heart views took like an hour. During ultrasounds, I can't lay on my back because like they're pushing and it makes me feel like I'm gonna pass out. And so I was trying to do it on my side and then eventually she was like, I think we're just gonna have to have you lay on your back so we can get this last view. So I did. And I was there probably a little bit longer than I should have and started getting, started getting really lightheaded. She finally got what she needed to let me sit up and so I was sitting there on the, you know, the edge of the bed just trying to get my bearings back from feeling lightheaded. And then I felt like all of the walls were moving up, like the bookshelves and the walls all looked like they were moving up. And then I realized that she was lowering the table that I was sitting on. So I was going down. <laughs> so it was just like really weird. I mean, I was pretty close to passing out then. So, but anyway, they got everything they needed on her. So that was good. The doctor told me that, um, if I haven't gone into labor already, that they'll induce me sometime between 37 and 38 weeks. So that puts us right around like December 30th to January 6th, I think. My cervix has not shortened at all. From the last time, actually she measured it like a millimeter longer than they did last time, so that's really good. That is loosely an indicator of going into preterm labor and the fact that it's not shortening is a good sign but I guess it's not the end all be all so anyway that felt like good news and then their pockets of amniotic fluid were about equal which is another really good thing one other symptom that I forgot to mention before I've been getting like really lightheaded and dizzy pretty frequently and when I check my blood pressure it's low it's like in the 90s over the 50s so it's normal is under 120 over 80 mine's like 97 over 56 or something is usually what it's around and it's making me pretty lightheaded so my doctor recommended that i increase my sodium intake and drink gatorade so i guess i'll start doing that um, what's funny is with the sciatic nerve pain and the rib pain my other doctor said decrease your sodium intake because it can cause inflammation around your organs so one says increase my sodium the other says decrease that's pretty much it as far as updates um, I will go ahead and do my bump update. Okay, I just put on this top for the filming, but I have like athletic shorts on, so don't judge. All right, here's my belly. It's really popped out, and I definitely have that Linea Nigra there. It's like, um, I still feel like if I wear something really flowy or loose, I can conceal it. And even yesterday I had on something that wasn't tight, but it wasn't loose. And one of my patients was like, um, wow, that's really incredible that you're six months with twins and you know aren't any bigger than you are. Hopefully it's an indication that I won't get just absolutely ridiculously huge at the end just for comfort. Um, but we'll see, I guess anything can happen at the end of a twin pregnancy and we've got 12 weeks to go. So I'm 25 weeks as of yesterday and now I know that that means that there's 12 weeks or less left, which is so crazy. So um, this felt like a pretty boring update. Sorry, I didn't really, there were no bells and whistles. I just kind of talked the entire time. So sorry if you were bored through the entire thing, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want to follow us on our journey. I'll link below those bras that I was talking about. I have to remember to do that. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.